Next, we will create a table to store our customer payment details, and we will call this table Cust Pay Detail. This time, I will use the as statement as I will need to review a number of tables in question with regards to customer payment details. In other words, I will need to investigate a number of tables to identify what fields I want to bring back for my analysis. However, the starting point for my analysis will be to utilize the Customer California table we created in our last section, which gives us a good starting point for our analysis, as we have reduced the Customer California table to a specific set of customers to work with. However, if I didn't have such a sample set of data, and the scope of the analysis had not been defined as customers from California, I would still probably go ahead and create a small sample set of customers to review our analysis against, which may very well turn out to be using the same sample set of customers, for example, a customer set from California. It doesn't really matter what criteria you choose for your sample set, but it is important to be able to reproduce your sample set of data every time you come back to your piece of analysis to remain consistent. You may also want to consider if this analysis needs to be run at a future date and hard code your sample set to a specific date and time. For example, if our sample set of customers today contains 200 customers and we wanted to compare growth from today against a future point in time, for example in three months time, we still want to be able to say that our sample set of customers is 200 at the initial point of analysis, so we can compare like with like. That is, we want to look at the growth of just the 200 customers over the three-month period and not include any new customers that have signed up in the meantime. If we have saved our sample set of data into a table, then we can refer to this table three months later. But if for some reason our table was dropped as part of data warehouse cleanup or we accidentally dropped it ourselves, then we may want to take into account criteria that uniquely identifies our 200 customers, such as account creation date between two set dates. This would ensure that we don't take into account any new customers, but at the same time we may have customers that are deleted or become inactive in the meantime. So you may want to also take into consideration such criteria as activity to ensure your sample set can be recreated with the same set of customers at a future date. Moving on, as we will now be working between two databases, that is the sales database and the Sacula database, we will need to qualify our tables with our database names. To start with, we will bring in our first table, which will be the sales customer California table, and provide this with an alias of CUS and select the customer ID from this table. Next, we'll go ahead and join to the Sacula payment table and give this an alias of pay for reference, and we will join the two tables together by means of the customer ID. From the payment table, we will select the payment ID, the rental ID, the payment amount, and finally the payment date. Next we will join to the rental table, but as not all payments are directly related to rentals, we will make a left join to ensure that we capture all payments. We will join on the rental ID between the rental and the payment table. In the rental table, we can see there is an inventory ID, which we can use to join to the inventory table. I can open up the inventory table and identify which fields are available to me. I'll select the rental ID from the rental table, followed by the inventory ID from the inventory table. In the inventory table, I can see there is a film ID. I can use the film ID to join to the film table. And from the film table, I can select the title of the film, which I may or may not use in my final analysis. 
But as we are trying to build up a picture of what happened in the last couple of weeks' worth of payments, we need to start thinking about call-outs for our final report, such as highest-earning movies during the last number of weeks. In our scenario of a DVD store, we can pull back the film titles and display, for example, the top 10 films rented in the last number of weeks. If we were looking at retail products, this may be a case of pulling back a list of top 10 retail products on our website. Such nuggets of information can provide a lot of value to an audience, such as upper-level management or directors, as they are typically only reviewing high-level figures. It can be useful to also provide some insight into these figures, such as what was driving the business at the time. Obviously, there are many other insights that we could potentially provide back to a business. In the case of what information we have for a movie, we might also want to bring back the likes of top categories of movies, for example, thriller, comedy or romance. However, you decide to omit these details as you are aware that categories can vary a lot between different movie productions, and in some cases, no category is recorded for a movie title. What we might note, though, as a side project for future analysis, is to look at cleaning up categories of movies into a set of categories that suits our business better. For now, though, we will keep with movie titles, which our business will be familiar with. Moving on, we will now want to join from the inventory table to the store table to identify which payments were made at which stores. From the inventory table, we can see there is a store ID, and we can use the unique index to join to the index of our store table. Reviewing the store table, we identify there is an address ID for our store, and from here we can go ahead and join to the address table, using the index address ID to join on both tables. From the address table, we identify the address and the district that the store is located in. Note that the store address is no different from a customer address, and hence we can store address details generically in the address table, without the need to have a specific store address table. Once we are satisfied that we have all the fields of information that we require for analysis, we can go ahead and run the query to create our table customer payment detail. Note when creating a table in SQL, no two field names can have the same name. As I've brought back rental ID twice, this has thrown up an error when creating the table. To resolve this error, I've removed one of the rental IDs, but if for some reason I wanted to keep the second rental ID, I could rename the second rental ID and this would be perfectly acceptable when creating the table. That's all for part two of our sales project.